1159 at Radio Free America, and this is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the walls. The chair is against the walls. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. <laughs> And welcome, everybody, to our Daily Gun Show. We come to you live every day at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's 4 Pacific for about an hour and 90 minutes each day. We do three gun-related topics, different topics throughout the week. And we run it live on YouTube. We simulcast it over at uh, gunchannels.com. And uh, when we're all done, we'll take the audio and make it into a podcast over at iTunes. Uh, let's see, we uh, encourage everybody who's listening to the show now and in the future to give us some uh, feedback on whatever platform you're listening on. Uh, interact with, uh, with our channels over there, uh, subscribe and uh, give us comments, all those kind of things. Let us know you're there. They also help uh, the shows to be recommended to more listeners and viewers, and that's always a goal. So we do appreciate people that take the time out to do that. It's really been helping the show grow. There are five hosts. Four of us are in here today. We've got uh, Z just jumped in early. He must have got fired from his one of his nine to fives out on the island of Maui. Thanks for jumping in. Aloha. Sorry to hear you got fired. Then we got Smeggy jumping in from, I think he's in Michigan. Hey, how's everyone doing? Then uh, Bob is out here in Tucson, Arizona for the next couple of days. Hey, having a great day. I'm also in Tucson, and then we don't know where Dano is, but he's on the road somewhere between Camden, Tennessee, and Upper Illinois. Kind of figured he'd jump in, but I guess we're just saying off air. Uh, I, I think he might be just tired, like fell asleep as soon as he got to the hotel. Well, he was talking about taking more than a little bit of time to do a little recon as well, so. He had a mosey on through back home. Yep, yep. Or he's just too big for the show now. He's been trained up. He doesn't need our, our BS anymore, our amateur BS. I mean, that is technically possible, but I don't know if it's probable. I don't know, man. It's, he should be. He's, he's like an old gray-haired Punisher. He's just living in the woods of Tennessee now. He just left his car. I think he's got a coonskin cap yet? Probably. Like Davy Crockett? Probably. Squirrel can't coon a squirrel hat. Probably wearing well, a bear. That's a problem. It, it takes more squirrels than it does raccoons. See, that's why you usually. Anyway. He's probably got a bear skull. Did uh, anything Why's happen overnight? Why is Enrique saying we don't read the uh, gun challenge chat? That's the one we predominantly read. They we're just usually waiting for him to say something interesting. And if somebody's been saying anything specifically today. But anyway, so uh what do you mean anything happened overnight? Um I don't think so. I've been yeah, uh too exciting other than the you know, hit or miss Tuesday night's nine o'clock. How'd that go? With you being late and everything like that, did you get uh, demerits or did you just get scolded? I, I don't know. Or? I think we broke up or something, but I think it's all okay now. I'm not sure. Well, you know what? You can do it without him, man. <laughs> You'll be okay without him. You, you can, can do you, you can do better. better. <laughs> I'm just without glad Smeggy has a sense of humor. <laughs> oh, yeah, obviously. Okay, so somebody's echoing really bad. Um, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? Rick also had his show last night. I watched a bit of that one, Big Donor. And then um I'm going to address some of the stuff, like, say, uh, Enrique saying that we don't read the Gun Channels chat. I think he's kidding because we read that one almost more. And then uh, speaking of the Gun Channels chat, uh, Chris is asking Bob specifically when you're passing through Colorado. And isn't there a possibility that you're going to be meeting up with uh, Flath in Colorado Springs? Well, I'm asking that. That is the plan, yeah, Colorado Springs. So Bob's leaving here end of this week so i'm guessing he'll be in colorado early next week and then you're just moseying right you're not oh yeah i'm taking my time going through colorado so if if we can do it i don't i'm going to try to take the cop car up and follow bob up through albuquerque to those red dawn rocks but uh 
I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not. But then, uh, uh, yeah, Bob will just basically go north from there and meet up with Flath, uh, I'm guessing, in a week or so. I forget how long Flath is going to be in Texas. I think more than a week. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, he might already be there, though, yes? Well, he's definitely already there. That's what I'm saying. I don't remember if it was a week or so, 10 days, maybe. I think he said it was 10 days. Ah, okay. So being on the YouTube side, that his son's Boy Scout troop found a live grenade in a rummage sale box. How cool is that? Um, was the pin in or not? Well, live, I'm assuming, means not detonated. They usually don't reload them. Yeah, so uh, I think it's around the 16th, Flaff and I are meeting up, and apparently he's staying at the KOA in Fountain, so that's where we'll meet. Fountain, Colorado, I guess. Is that where all the cool kids go? I have no idea. I haven't even looked at a map yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's somewhere in Colorado. I'll find it. So, oh, yeah. Well, please. yeah, Colorado's not that big. Since Bob can't be bothered to read the chat... It says, I'm buying you a beer, Bob. No, it's not me saying that. That's Chris saying that. Oh, cool. Thanks, Chris. I'll take you up on that. Yeah, it might behoove you to uh, to run into Chris. So now, Maybe uh, you might even you might even want to vote for him on Daily uh, Gun Show hashtag showdown every once in a while, Bob. Really? Oh, okay. Well, I will now. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> that easy to keep the Canadian. Yeah, the fix is in, man. Buy me a beer and yeah, I'll vote for you. They called them all Milwaukee bomb squad. If I get it. Yeah. Well, man, you kind of have to, dude. If it, if it's squad, like a, if it's a, come on, dude. If it's a legit hand grenade, that's exactly what procedure dictates. Is you, you know, call whatever their version of the EOD is, right? I'm pretty sure the procedure is find a lake that nobody's swimming in or boating in, and then pull a pin and wing it. Um, that is not how you dispose of a grenade properly, sir. No, I would do that too. I mean, I would find a nice abandoned gravel pit, and it'd be like, oh, I yeah. wouldn't, dude. I wouldn't waste it. Are yeah, you kidding me? It. Exactly. Well, I'm gonna it. blow it up. Leave it unexploded. Exactly. Oh, no. no. well, then you're not gonna. Call oh, I don't it have one. I don't know what you're talking about. No. Yeah, yeah I never found that. Yeah. That's crazy. Talk. Give me a break. What would I? What would I do with that? <laughs> Now, when the Cubans come invading with the North Koreans, maybe I got a little something. Maybe, you know, maybe. No, but see, there you go. Testament to the Boy Scouts, though, G-Webs, right there, right? What's that? That they're snooping around in rubbish bins? Rubbish? No, that they turned it in. Jeez. Anyway, I was saying I'd be scared shitless of a grenade. I would highly... Oh, hell yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because just because the pin's in it doesn't mean that it still can't blow it up on you or in you or around you or through you. I don't know about it. Safe, you know. But you can just not insert the detonator if you want it to be really safe and keep them separate. Now, I'm not saying I understand how one works, but can you unscrew the top on one of those and then that's what kind of keeps it from blowing up? Or do you, does it then blow up if you did that? They don't. No, you so I would not recommend trying to take apart a fucking grenade. You know, Bob. Okay. Men and then take apart a grenade. Well, oh, I mean, a really old one. for me. No, I would say a really old one would be even more fucking dumb. To oh, say. hell yeah. It would be I, all yeah. and but. it's be unstable. I think that's... A new one, one. Thing. Like, they do that. That's how you, like, when you get the grenades, they're in a box, and then the detonators are separate, and you put them together, and you screw them together. And then they're number one. They don't even teach us that in basic. So I don't know how the hell you supposedly know how grenades come. And then two, like where do you this grenade experience? Yeah, and, and like you're saying, the stuff that it's contained within or whatever, though, as time goes, the safety properties of those containments uh, lessen. Yeah. So they probably did the right thing. I, I would say that the. The Boy yeah. Scouts did the right thing. Yeah, Bob and Mingo's great. You got a glass yeah. and fire water. So we're rocking shit. We would, none of us would like go and keep it and play with it. Well, I don't know that. It, you, in saying a perfect world where it was okay for me to have it with like no legal ramifications, I don't know that I'd ever be like playing with it. I'm not throwing catch. Um, I'm not bowling with it. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, no, it's it's not a toy in on any oh. level. Yeah, right, well, they can be may of course. Read the best get off of this finding grenades thing. Yeah. Doesn't happen very often. All right, so getting back to the show, which is we're not even doing justice here. Today is episode three oh eight. Right. Yeah. I, um I noticed the schedule changed a little bit. Is it just because of today? What do you mean? Well, when you look at the schedule, it's different today. Yeah, formatting? That's because of the new formatting, that's all. Okay. You're talking about how long the boxes are? Yeah. No, it's just the new formatting because somebody crammed that entire quote up into the first one. Instead. As opposed to just literally... What? Anyway. Yeah. Moving along. So... Let's see. Today's episode 308. It's Wednesday, so we're going to have a CCW topic. How many magazine is the topic? And then we'll be doing the entertainment topic. We came up with 308s, so that's our entertainment topic today. We're doing the tactical quiz, which will be a new and unique tactical quiz never been done before. And looks like we have patch panel stories happening today. And there's a very special piece of gun history happening today. We'll I don't know if, uh, how special that is, but okay. Well, maybe we'll make that an answer ambush. So if someone is able to identify the, what we have in for our history thing today in our spreadsheet here, then uh, we win a special prize. Actually, we have a special unique prize that will go along with that one. Oh, I want to win. You can. <laughs> See, oh, normally on the quizzes, I probably still would qualify because I don't know the answers myself until I have to look them up. But yeah, on this one, I did already see it. Dog boy saying on the gun shell side, which is I'm going to go back to the hand grenade one because it is cool. He says, uh, or they say, I don't know, because it, it would be cool to see the bomb squad let the Boy Scouts, it would be cool if the bomb squad let the scouts see it go boom. And I'm sure they do that inside of some kind of containment thing, but that would be awesome if they let That would be great. That'd be just as fun as waiting in the lake, really, because then you know nobody's going to get hurt yeah, as long Plus, as there's no fish in the lake. You want to hang out in the bomb squad scoot, suit, or at least put the helmet on or something, you know? Hell yeah. The bomb squad was happy that them scouts found it. Yeah, think For about sure. it. What if it would have been some uh, delinquent or thug or terrorist found it? In other words, a bunch of Canadians some rummaging around right then. Well, yeah, I guess. Like that could be. We're too polite to be terrorists. Sticky fingers. All right. Kill, killing us with kindness. Should we just jump right into the first topic? Is there anything else before we jump in? We're not even I think we should jump in. Draw. Yeah. So, CCW, how many magazine? Two. Two. Somebody in Japan asked this question and then the translation came through. We're just done. Two. Done. Everybody's two. I, I just carry the one in the gun. I don't carry a backup mag. What? What are you, a suicidal maniac? No. Well, if he was suicidal, he'd only need one bullet, but anyway. So we'll put, oh, we can put that up as a poll. I think we have the polls working, so I'll go over and we can look up the poll here. And I was going to say we could ask the people in the uh, that are listening live how many mags they carry. Nice uh, pants out there said, uh, none. I'm carrying a revolver today. Oh, it's just uh, nice. Matt out there says, depends on what you're carrying. Uh, and then angry, of course. Two, one in gun, one is backup, typical CCW. Oh, nice. Chris is out there. Depends on uh, quantity of, uh, of mags. If it's sub 10 rounds, carry three. Damn. Yeah. However, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying it starts to get to be a lot to. Um, I'm not saying it's not bad to have it. I'm just saying if we're talking about concealment, that may be less stuff in your pocket to put the third mag, basically, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Well, that's why you wear a mag pouch and that looks like a knife pouch. Right? Like most magazines, single magazine pouches look like a case or something so that's not going to be at all you know unusual to have on your belt 
I know it's going to be hard for you to believe, Denim Tuxedo, but not everybody carries a buck knife on their belt. Just so you know. What? Wrong with you, Philistines. Yeah. That's all right. So, gee, how many do you think? I think the rest of us said uh, two, and Schmeggy said one. One. One? Okay. Unless I'm doing something, then two. So we've got the uh, deal over here with the poll. So every, uh, everybody can go over here and vote, and we will watch the results live during the show here. And then people that are listening after the show can go vote and see the, sh the, the results later. What the results come up to. If anybody that wants to can head over. All you got to do is sign in the gun channels, and then you can make a vote. I'm going to vote one. Damn it working yesterday. See if it works for everybody. Did you just say you're going to vote one? Did I miss something? I thought you were all scorning me for only carrying one. You carried none, I thought. You carried the one in the mag. That counts as one, dude. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, I thought two meant two extra. No, 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 no. How many mags? Oh, my goodness. So now we're saying a mag in the gun is one. So none would be like, oh, I'm not even carrying a gun. Well, none is a revolver. All right. I would say none means the one in your gun or whatever. Dang, I thought the polls were working. So see if they're working for Poll you. Poll is working. It is working for you? It is working. Okay. I voted for two. If you said how many extra mags, then yeah. one would be the extra. Oh. Or how many reloads, maybe? If you carry a revolver, you might carry you know, another five or whatever rounds. Well, and somebody out there already said they carry a, what did they call it, say, a speed strip or speed loader, what did he say? A uh, revolver and speed strip. Hmm. So that would technically be one extra. You, you said it worked for you, I, because it didn't work for me. Oh, yeah. well, said something know. about, like, my tokens weren't correct or something. Yeah, <laughs> well, then, there it is, mister. So I guess I'm not allowed to go to Chuck E. Cheese. I don't have the right token. And showbiz. Where a kid can be a kid. Yeah, okay. Now, I understand the word extra means one more than in the firearm, but that was not the question. The question yeah, was, the word how many magazines? But anyways, we don't have to get all our... So, basically, you guys all say you carry an extra magazine, and I do not. Am I really that crazy? I mean, is that horrible? Well, I think whether your level of crazy has absolutely nothing to do with how many magazines you carry, Smeggy. I think it's completely based on a and different I thing. If I can justify myself, myself a little bit, I do carry full size. So, I mean, one magazine is still 17 rounds. And you have you got to understand he's a, he, he's practically a kid. He's just barely out of you know out of his teens and. And he probably wears them skinny jeans all over the place. You can't probably have two magazines. Hey. All right. So I did I go take offense to that. I cleared my browser cache, and now it let me vote. So uh, maybe that'll help people. But anyway. No. Uh, Moon does make a point, Smeggy, and your first mag may fail. That, and so to me, that would be the main reason. Not necessarily because I think that I'm going to need that many more rounds. It's that. If that mag fails, then you, depending on your type of firearm that you have, it may have a magazine disconnect, and you, your firearm may not work if your mag fails. That's true. That, so that, that would be possible. that would be more of an important reason in my mind to having that second mag than necessarily because you think you're going to need that twenty third round or the thirtieth round or the. So, and I'm not saying that there might be not be a time when you actually do need it. I'm not. I'm not trying to say that at all. At all. I'm just saying with the malfunction drill that that may be a better thing to have. Yeah, that's a good point, Maggie. You should actually look into that. I know you wear those. You know the pockets are tight in those jeans, but I wear normal pants. Let's get that. <laughs> I was. I was just fucking right with him, Bob. <laughs> I'm just fucking with him. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean. It's not a big deal. I, like I say, I carry an extra mag for the high power, and it's 
Like I can either stick it in my back pocket, what I don't like to do, because then you're sitting. You mean like when you're making toast and coffee in the kitchen, or when do you mean that you carry an extra magazine, Bob? Well, because certainly not when he's at home. No, no. As in no. Canada. It's an interesting concept, isn't it? Right. I can I can visit a country that will trust me to own a gun and carry it, or I can go home where they don't. Even though I have again, to. I don't know that they ever determined that it. A tourist gets to work the laws oh. of the land, but I think that was a show last week. Yeah, no, we uh, like I, I like I've, I talked to the Arizona Citizens Defense League, and and they were like, no, of course it's the Constitution, and if you can legally own a gun in the state, and you can, you know, then you Bob, can you can't it. legally own a gun in the state because you are not an American citizen. I can because I can bring my gun from home, which means it is my gun, and I am in the state, so that means I legally own it. All right? Doesn't mean I have to buy it here. It just means I have to have the legal ability to possess a firearm, and then I have the constitutional right to carry it. That's the way they explained it to me. Hmm. But either way, I, I'm gonna still go with. Uh... I, I understand everything. Yeah, I understand yeah. everything you guys are saying. I I do get it. You know, we're preparing for the worst, not necessarily expecting it or whatever, all that stuff. But I guess I'm taking a chance. So you guys are prepared for point zero zero one percent, and I'm point zero zero two percent of a chance or whatever. I don't know. However, that works out. You know what I mean? Like, I'm still. I think okay. I, I I'm still. Uh, I think I'm still prepared at least somewhat more than other people i'm just not as good as you guys so i'll just hang out with all you guys there you go safety in numbers other than i guess number of mags so i updated the poll to say extra mags well that's not even a question well i'm changing it so it's more specific so now people can go in there and say how many extra mags so you can go back to the questions and change your answer if you want to No, I just carry one extra. How do, how do I change my answer? Just go back to show questions, and then you can just put the dot in whatever one you want instead. Okay. Well, then, there. Get rid thank of all you my so cash. much. You can send it in an envelope to <laughs> Island Z Survivor. That is the way to clear the cash. The show questions one? No, by your computer cash, anytime you want that to happen, just put all your loose cash into an envelope, send it to Z in Hawaii, uh, and then yes. it'll, it'll work better. Yep. Okay, right. I'll go ahead and give that a try then. Why don't we suggest that that's, we're going to leave that one up to the uh, poll, and we'll see what kind of responses we get later. There you go. Yeah, that's a good idea. I, I actually like that, that, because then the answer comes from the audience. Well, right. an answer comes from the audience, not necessarily the answer. Yeah. Oh, of course not. The only right answer is going to come from the host of the show, of course. But you know. <laughs> well, I don't know about that always either. <laughs> Still no guesses about... It just, it just may be different for every host. Yes, there you go. Still no guesses on what the piece of firearms history might be today. It's a piece of gun channels history. Yeah, it's not firearms so much as gun channels, yeah. All right, so then we'll uh, continue digging into the episode 308, and that'll take us to the entertainment segment of the show, where we're going to talk about 308s in movies, I guess. 308s in entertainment in general. Yep. And yeah. I guess before between the first and second segment, though, we, we take a break and we feature one of the uh, members over on gun channels. Uh, Gun Challenge is a place we built a while back and uh, focus on firearms, community driven, uh, no ads or anything, um, no uh, banners and stuff because the members are going. So it's been a pretty cool place to be. And that's why we like to feature one of the members each day. And today we're going to feature Flippy. So uh, Flippy's the panda. I don't think he's out there right now, but uh, he's from Texas. I think he's, he's from Houston. And then uh, he uh, hangs out in the chats quite a bit in the evenings, sometimes in the daytime now uh, with whatever he's doing. I guess he hangs out in the daytime more uh, often in the evenings. 
But always add something interesting to the chats and uh, love them or hate them. He's flipping. Outside of Dallas, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was Houston. No, you guys do that to him every time, and I think it's usually just to piss him off, but I'm not, yes. not sure. He's not here. So. Yeah. Um, well, it's, like I've known Flippy for a while, I guess since he started coming on, because I thought he was hilarious. And for the longest time, I truly believed he was one of those people who was a furry, just because he was so vehement in his denial of it when I went and asked him one time, just innocently. And, and you're kind of an asshole like that, so... No, well, I was like totally not abrasive, like just inquisitive. Like, hey, by the way, do you mind if I ask you a personal question off air in a com, you know, private chat or something? I'm sure that's how it went down. Oh yeah, probably yeah. So anyway, um, I have been assured by a few people that no, he does not walk around at least in public in in the panda suit. Although he has admitted on air, he does have some kind of furry costume he wears. Some kind, of, yeah. So, you know, I'm not sure, but I mean, he, he's assured me he's not one of those people, and so have several others who have met him. So, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I may be wrong, I may have been wrong, and he really doesn't dress up in a furry costume to have sex orgies with a bunch of other people. So, yeah. Thanks I, for I, ruining the show with that, Bob, by <laughs> the way. I'd just like to thank you right now. Thanks I'm for sorry. ruining the whole thing, bro. You like fucking the prick. You like the purple. Which means he's a really nice guy. Really popular, yeah, and Flippy. Uh, I wish I would have done that about thirty <laughs> seconds sooner. He 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 still comes around. He used to be in a lot more, and now he's only a, a once in a while or whatever. But I don't know. He's got an interesting sense of humor. So some people like it, some people don't. Sometimes you got to be in the right mood to like it. But he, we've had some decent conversations. Absolutely. He's he's one of the good guys. We definitely yeah. need a easy commercial. He really <laughs> which I was about to say until Z so Oh really, Bob, you're about to get muted again, so you just keep going, bro. I really do think he's a good guy and I've had some great conversations with him, so all kidding aside, it's great having me in the group, Flippy. All right, well, if that flippy love fest is over, I guess we'll go into the entertainment segment you of the show. You hate it when we don't talk about the guest, and then you hate it when we do talk about the guest. Is there any right answer for you? No, I'm just trying to keep the show going. So oh, then, okay. Uh, All right, then. To the entertainment segment, and we're going to talk about 308s in movies. Is there some way to verify this? Like, Can we go to that info deba and find 308s in there? Uh, you can, but there's no literal 308 page. What it's going to then do is it'll tell you, like, the, say, the Galil uh, and 762, you know, and then it might mention it's, something. It'll mention yeah, Hunter. 308. Shoot him up. Yeah. It'll mention that. It'll mention uh, Commando, First Blood, you know, uh, and then it'll tell you what the type was in in the movie itself. Okay, I can I can bring up one movie where it was featured in quite pr pr prominently, and uh, it's uh, a movie probably most people haven't seen, but it's about the Vietnam War. But it's about Australians fighting in the Vietnam War, and it's called The Odd Angry Shot. And it's a really why were the good Australians in the Vietnam War? Because they were American allies. They tried to get Canada in it too, but we never joined. But a whole bunch of people from Canada went and joined your army to fight there. So it was it was a big thing when I was younger. It was is I knew people who actually went over there. So, um, but yeah, the Australians went over there and they had platoons and they were apparently quite good at recon. Uh, Australian fighter or fighter bombers, Canberra bombers actually flew over there too. Um, so we're talking about three hundred eight, Bob. Yes, yes, okay, so 308s, yes, they, they predominantly it was the FN, right? And that, because that was their service right. So that'd be a foul because it was the right hand of the free world, right? That's right, yeah. the right arm. Yeah, yeah and uh, so there's a 308 used in the jungles of Vietnam, something not that uh, common. I, it's been like there's a, what was that show? It was Flippy told us about it. That's weird. Um, Oh man, the siege of Jakartaville, 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 something like that. Are you beating on something? J. Dotville. 
yeah the siege of yeah was irish uh peacekeepers were under siege by african soldiers of some kind and uh they all had 308s or a bunch of them had 308 oh. the, had some interesting guns in that show so there's another one with 308s in it um there's so many right because you know any movie from south africa 308s what was the james jaeger movie Oh, was that a vamp? That was a no. It's a zombie. Something that falls. What? Something falls or something? Nightmare. Uh, night, night, day, night. Daylight. Daylight. Fall? Daylight's in. Daylight's in. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. It's right on the cover. Suppressed. Three hundred eight. Right on the cover. Uh, oh. In the new King Kong movie. There is a prominent 308. You mean that Springfield Arms 308? Well, I don't know that he had a Springfield in Daylight End. He may have had a, uh, the River or uh, a Fulton Armory or with some kind of short. Happened. Yeah, with some kind of shortened up 308 M14 variant with a uh, suppressor on it. But what if it was a Springfield? 308. <laughs> I didn't think it was bolt action though. I thought it was semi auto. It is. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, Springfield. Okay. I'm 14. <laughs> Tiny Legging little. Legging Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, the Val Met 78 series of light machine guns came in 762 by 51. Yeah. As well as seven six two by thirty nine. That's right. What are movies of those in though? Well, like I just said, Commando. Um, oh. First Arnold Blood had uh, what? The oh. pig, right? I'm sixty. Yeah, like, well, that's not a rifle though. That's a like what? Machine. What? It's a light Only machine gun. <laughs> this show is three oh eight. So yeah, three oh eight. Mel on the any movie that's got like Mel on the machine gun, like a brown. Okay. Right. I just know most of those were thirty six. Mel right. on Well no, I guess the later ones were. Mel on the YouTube side brought up an excellent example in the beginning of Lone Wolf McQuaid when he's up on that rock shooting at the people with horses. Or actually he's just scoping oh no, he does shoot at him a couple of times. They do a super close in of the seven six two by fifty one box and uh, show his rifle up there. You know what I'm talking about? Like basically the. Oh, beginning. right at the beginning, yeah. Maybe you before. kicked out my teeth. Yeah. Rock, yeah. 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 So I think along with that, there might have been some 308 brass in Red Dawn when they're looting the dude's dad's. Ha! <laughs> there, there was particularly. It even shows it in the movie. Now, here's one of the other things you just mentioned: 308 brass. I'm gonna, I'm gonna segue. Uh. Different, but still 308. Beverly Hills Cop 2. Do you remember the round? Okay. Tick, tock, tock, tick, tock, no. tick, tock, tick, tock. No, I've only ever seen that movie once, though. 44 Automag. But they had to make them out of cut down 308 brass. Oh, really? Hm. Yeah. Well, that's what they said anyway in the movie. That can't be right, though, because the 44 Automag case would have to be. 44 caliber and 308 isn't. I guess the brass might be. Uh, the brass expands in the back. It's neck down, so it could be. Yeah. yeah. That's right. I do have something when I was going um, through. Boy, ammo, broke. When I went through uh, the ammo collection from Tucson Guns over there, there was some, I think there was some uh, type of ammo that had 308 on it, but it was certainly not 308. So there must be a couple of different things that they'll resize out of 308, which makes sense. It's real common brass. Yeah. And and it is the right kind of brass to use in an auto pistol. So 28 weeks later, anybody seen that one? That was the sequel to 28 Days Later. Hmm. Are they using fouls in there or something? No, right? he uses a Springfield at the beginning. When he's on the roof. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to talk about the whatever the cops. Or no, you are talking. No about worries. Them. Yeah, he was one of the military dudes. I think that's probably why he had an M1A. Yeah, really, honestly. Was, 
Is the uh, PSG one 308? It's 308, isn't it? I don't even know what that is off the top of my head. What? You don't know what an HNK PSG one is? That was the coolest sniper rifle ever through the seven or through the eighties and nineties. Uh, oh, is that the one based off the G three or something? Yeah, you'll know as soon as I show up on screen. Yeah. I don't have it. But anyway, the G three too. Any movie that's got the G three, so anything from Germany, right during the eighties. The soldiers. I would have had a three hundred eight. We weren't all watching German movies in the eighties, though, Bob. I don't know if you can see my screen. That's it. Yeah. I can. Nice. I can. So there's tons. Of anything in the 80s and 90s. Well, definitely the 90s, but sometimes in the 80s even, I think, you'd see these if, like, a SWAT team was on, had a sniper. They'd be pulling out. A, a good one, good movie would pull out a PSG one. Yeah. And they, they were darn good rifles. I mean, and we haven't talked about any hunting rifle, yeah. you know, yeah. like a whether it's and, a and, you know, uh, Remington 700 or, or what have you, you know. Well, in 308, yeah. Well, yeah, that's the whole thing. It's the caliber of the day, man. Well, we're not getting any uh, comments coming in for about Anybody else we had never mentioned anything about the the AR-10 yet either. AR-10? What movies is it in? Well, I bet if I go to IMFDB and I type in... It's not working. Nice. I love it when it doesn't want to work. AR-10... Let's see what it let's see what it spits out. Well, we, uh... Nice daylight's end was one of them, but that's for the Wasser. Um, let's see, AR eighteen. That's not in. My down. You to... Yeah, that's a good point, G. Look, apparently, AR-10 is not in as, in as many movies as one might think. No, they cost too much, and I don't think they bothered. They have an AR-15 that looks the same. So if they've got, like, rubber guns or, you know, all the cheap stuff they used to throw around in yeah. movies. Because when they show a gun in a movie, we should talk about that sometime. Like, you know, they show the gun in the movie, but how often is that actually even a gun? Like, once in a while, it's a real gun. A lot of times, it's just a mock-up, and then sometimes it's just yeah. rubber so they can throw it all around. If they're gonna like drop it out of a helicopter, out of a car or something, it's just a sacrificial piece of rubber. So, nice. I just watched *Lethal Weapon* uh, yesterday, and uh, Charles on the uh, YouTube side said *Lethal Weapon* has a 308 in it. it certainly does. And I wa again watched it yesterday on TV. Excellent movie. I know people make fun of uh, '80s cop movies or whatever. Uh, the original *Lethal Weapon* was. Excellent. Angry is saying Terminator has 308s. When does Terminator have 308s? Um, maybe the cop sniper rifles, maybe? I don't... Uh... Oh, I thought he meant the actual Terminator. I can't remember Terminator picking up the 308. Because I know he, he, it's the 180 is all over that thing, but... Uh... And the Spaz, and then... Oh, nice. M14's everywhere on board of the 4th of July. That's true. That's true. That's really true. That's a good movie for watching those. No, I don't remember Starship oh. Troopers having a 308 in it, but that's on me. Uh, Angry saying in the future, resist in the future, the resistance guys at the door have them. So I missed that. So that's oh. cool. Watch that again. Uh, AR-10 is in from Russia with Love. Excellent. And Love and Bullets. I don't know what that one is. But, uh, oh, yeah. uh, shooter, Marky Mark. Shooter? Shoot a the Marky Mark movie where he's, uh, yeah, I just don't remember him shooting a 308. Well, they're saying the, oh, well, uh, and I may have misread the comment, uh, the 408 Shy Tack, Shy Tack, Shy Tack. And I don't know if that's a 308 anymore. Sure.
Well, Let's see. Anything else out there? Set, what? Speaking to 308. What? Is this happening? I think it's happening. I don't think it's happening. That's what happens when it happens. That's what it sounds like. All right. So we are down to Thursdays. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hold on. Let me... And we're doing the taco quiz, so or pop quiz. So if you're not uh, watching the show on a regular basis, at any time, you could be required to take a tactical pop quiz, and that counts for 50% of your grade. So you Wait, to... question. We're not doing Thursdays, right? Because we already did Thursdays. No, it's said Fridays, yeah. Okay. Down there, clicked on You should see my box around there. Okay. So uh, it's happening now. So you can put down your pencils and you can hover over your uh, keyboards. We're watching the gun channel side. And then because of legal reasons, we have to watch the YouTube side as well. So uh, we're going to, for the correct answer, coming up on whichever side first, but we're flipping over the gun channels tab. So uh, now, does it have to be? Smart? I would have already refreshed if I were you guys, by the way. Refresh now before you ask the question and you stand a better chance. Just saying. But I would have done that already. What are you saying, Spike? Well, I was just wondering if uh, they can spell it correctly, or do they have to spell it the way Dano did? Hold on. That is true. So let's go over there and figure out what the hell. So you got to spell it in words, not phonetically from the streets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I didn't so, even notice that. <laughs> question is going to be asked, and then you're going to have to write down the answer. And that answer form of words or numbers, but it has to be most accurate to what Dano has written here. And the question is, all that noise. Somebody's doing something weird. All right, thanks. So, uh, Colt Single Action Army was offered in how many calibers? What? Read it, read it, read correctly. Colt Single Action Army was offered in over how many calibers? So, over how many calibers was the Colt single action army? In its lifetime. Yeah. In, its uh, in its whole life. Now, technically, Bob, please, so just a second. The answer will be the one who comes closest without going over. There. Oh, bing, bang, boom. Uh, we got oh, Nodak. Nodak, two days in a row, by the way, for Nodak. Do we even have an answer on the YouTube site? We have one answer on YouTube. We have one in. It's around. Well, they didn't refresh when we mentioned it, so you know, hey, that's the way it goes. And it looks like you're also cheating by just counting up. So you're gonna have to count for a long time because a correct answer did already come in, and it was from Nodak on the Gun Channel side, of course. Uh, thirty, thirty, over thirty calibers. Or thirty. Yeah, thirty. 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 You know how they stayed in the streets over by Dano. Is that's thirty. <laughs> 30 calibers, so from what to what? What's the smallest? What's the biggest? The smallest That's not part of the answer, Bob. Well, I'm just wondering myself. I'm well, then your Google works. It probably goes from 22, and it's a, you know, it's a 38 for caliber, so or 38 cal frame, so I can't imagine it. A single action army, is it a 45 frame? If it's a 45 frame, then it can go anything up to 45, so that's probably how it gets to 45. Well, I thought there was a 45 frame. So, back to the actual competition. Before we forget, congratulations, Nodak. You are the Hump Day Tactical Pop Quiz. Hot shot! Back to back. Way to go. Congratulations. Yeah, definitely. Way to be a winner. Definitely congratulations. Oh, yeah. You know where to go. There we go. So Because you've been a winner before. I see somebody lurking over in the spreadsheet. Somebody's waking up. So, let's see. Man, Apparently. it is a massively tall freaking quote in there. What the hell? So, courtesy, spreadsheet courtesy would be to put it in the second one at least so that all it does is knock the links down. But man, that is hard to figure yeah. out what's going on. Because especially when I have to have my little floaty calendar, cal, uh, uh, keyboard because I don't have any W or Q. 
Uh, yeah, anyhow. I have no idea what you're talking about. I just put the quote in where I usually put the quote in. All right, all right. So I think we're going to the gun shop. Dan will come in here yet? No, so we'll go to the gun shop. So uh, every day, one of the reasons we do a daily show is because we want to feature a different gun shop every single day. And thanks to the excellent audience, we've been getting quite a few uh, recommendations for shops. So this whole week, in fact, we've been uh, using recommendations from people out there. So today it's a place called Tanner's in Pennsylvania. I don't know if we've talked about this one before or not. For some reason, it sounds familiar. Oh yeah, Moon talks about it. That's like, uh, and if it, I don't know if it's the same one, but uh, they also have an online presence and/or store as well. Presence online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want presents. Yeah. yeah. Will people we... give me presents? That's presents, not presents. There we go. Yeah, no. presents. Like you put a little bow on them and stuff. Looks like they do auctions, and they have an email address. And some Moon's Moon always talking about how good their prices are and how he likes to go in there <laughs> because they always got so much on the shelves. They're always willing to do. I don't want to say deals, but. Uh, I've heard him mention how pleasant they are in there as well. Like, he likes going there, as far as I know. Well, here's what somebody, whoever sent this email or whatever it was in, it says, Tanner's is a local gun shop in PA. Personally, I can't say enough good things from the people, the prices, the sales, the work they'll do, charities. Oh, to, they'll do with charities. They definitely deserve a shout-out. So, thanks for that. That's what we're doing. Do you think that was Moon? Does that sound like something Moon would say about him? Um... Well, number one, I don't know if he would ever say I can't say enough because that doesn't sound like Moon at all. But um, no, Moon's not going to email the show. Come on. He's too busy Instagramming. Well, you know, making people famous. Well, it, like oh, it takes me to the website. Interesting. So uh, looks like they got it 10 to 6. I guess I can handle those hours. Closed on Sunday. Let's talk about that. That irks me. It bugs me. I don't understand. It's like they don't want to do business. Most Some states don't do Friday. that. What do what? Business on Sunday. Some states don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it bothers me because most people work Monday to Friday, and you only get two days with which to go enjoy. I bet yourself. you those are the states that believe in church. Then yeah. you can believe in church all you want. That doesn't mean the gun shop can't be open. What the hell? If but, they're at church, then they ain't at the gun shop. If they choose to be closed because hey man, they want I mean, well, sure. you can choose right. to pay for a one-way ticket to hell. That doesn't mean that everybody else has to. Just go ahead and be yeah. pro Sunday closed to gun shops. I'm against it. I'll always be against it. They can find some heathens, some people that could care less. To go work or it. they don't have to be so greedy where they can literally just not have to be open one day and give all their employees a nice day off. Close on Monday. I never have a problem. Oh, no. No, no, no. It's creative. Oh, no. Sunday is a day when most people have that's their day off, and they need to be able to go out and do stuff, and that's that's crazy. I can't understand. Lots Every of day. things are closed on Sunday, not just the gun shop, dude. I don't care. I don't. That doesn't make it right, just because other Well, places. just because oh, your schedule doesn't match with literally, what, 30% nope. of the country? No, there's no way to know how this many people on Sunday's off. Like I can't actually hear him. Can you hear him? No. It just sounds like a weird robot bird. I'm surprised you guys even uh, bother trying to figure out what he's saying. All right. Truly. Okay, Jesus Christ, Bob. Bob. What the fuck? Put it, Bob. So, uh, anyways, I'll we'll go on to. That, that turned out to be a nice thing for Tanner's Gun Shop, and then it went. It, we took a turn. Now, so, if only they would open up on Sunday, then it would be the best shop ever. I still think it sounds pretty good. sounds like people like it enough to send it into the show. So well, and Moon uh, does also agree with you that, what do you say, uh, Tanner's closes at 6 p.m. on Monday through Saturday, and then he says that does blow. So so he might be in agreement with you on on that. The Sunday thing. So that's our gun shop of the day. We like to, uh, what do you call it, showcase a gun shop every day on the show. That's kind of why we're here on doing the daily gun show. Excuse me, why we're doing daily gun show five days a week. We don't have daily gun show on Sunday. 
Oh, snap. You're right. I, I accept that challenge, and we're now going seven days a week because I forgot that it's unfair to the people on Sundays. Yep. Well, have fun with that. Yep, pretty much. We will have more fun on Sundays. We will. Yep. All right. So uh, that was just Dano texting me that he's having issues from wherever he's at. He's just going to keep trying. No worries. As long as he's safe. I'm not screen sharing it now, right? Okay. So, um, no, you were not. As far as I can tell. You next? Well, let's see. What was the second? Oh, we did the second segment of the show, didn't we? We did 308 in entertainment. Which we didn't even really cover like 308s in magazines or 308s in books or any of that. But that's all good. We did cover it pretty well. Sort of. A book that really paid too much attention to the gun, except for maybe the books about Hathcock. I'm sure he was using a 308, unless he wasn't. I don't know. Was he the guy on the on the, on the hill? Sniper from the Nam. Yeah. It, it, at night and all that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's possible that those guys wildcatted under something else, but on the other hand... Well, what was the name of that? What's the name of the Marine rifle anyway? The one that's the bolt action? Is it like an M207 or a... Uh, uh, I think it's a Remington 700 underneath of it all, right? Right, but it's got a designation that the Marines call it or whatever, right? So, like, if they, if they say that designation, you know that it is the military or the marineized like you just said uh remington 700 but it's got a few different things going on it but yes since you brought up m24 thank you thank you thank you thank you since you brought up marines let me tell you another thing i don't like about the marines so we're over there buying boots today with bob and all these other boots air force army i don't know whatever else are all 26 bucks the marines ones are like 54. Why do they get off thinking their boots are so much better than everybody else? That's used. Maybe yeah. they got to put up with more stuff in the Marines. I don't know. Maybe they make them just that little extra bit tougher for the Marines because they know that the Marines are going to beat them up that much more, perhaps. I don't know. The Air Force boots are very lightweight. Yeah, they're meh. They, they I would assume look. those are. Just, I would assume that the, and uh, maybe incorrectly and not trying to be a jerk, but I would assume. That the Air Force boots would probably be the most comfortable. Comfortable. No, they might actually be supposed to be lightweight because I figure so many of them are going to be, you know, up in the air. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But yeah, they also have zippers on them so you don't have to do up your laces, which also makes me think, why can't Air Force guys, you know, the, the zippy jet pilots actually figure out laces? You know, because they don't have time when they're skirmishing. Bob doesn't understand airplanes. Yeah, I got it. I got it. You just if you know, you just, when the siren goes and you're hitting, you know, you're hitting the door running, right? Tying your boots. There ain't no time for that. Zip, boom, done. On your way. It's not that they can't tie their laces in the Air Force, Bob. But anyway, all right. We got off topic from that. Coming from Marines, coming from the end of the 308 in entertainment, right? Yep. Uh, it says, or who says this? Um, yesterday says uh, Hathcock used a 30 out six, and I figured that makes more sense that they might want more, more range than 308. 308 is kind of a mid range, right? People that are shooting distance usually don't go to 308 if they can help it. Yeah, I guess well, twin mag. Three, 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 six, Lapua or thirty out six. Probably is like the bottom of the, the really reach out there cartridges. Um, I'm not sure why somebody's asking about shooting sports. I don't think today is the shooting sports topic. The first part of the uh, first subject today was CCW. I believe. How many magazines? Answering to the YouTube person asking those questions. All right. Yeah, I'm not sure they asked that earlier. I wasn't sure what they were talking about as far as the shooting sports thing. What? Uh, it's just somebody on YouTube was asking about shooting sports today. And... Oh, how many magazines? Because the title of the show is How Many Magazines Shooting Sports? Hashtag Taxable Quiz. So, I don't know. 
we probably shouldn't get so drunk and then fill out what we're going to be talking about. Uh, so I okay. guess sports got switched with entertainment. Hey, you know what? Once in a while, it happens. Oh, no. You know what it probably was? Epi- it's episode 308. We were like, why the hell would we talk about the shooting sports when on episode 308? Yeah. I think that's all it was. That's probably, yeah, that's what happened. Sure. Uh, is, is this uh, the time to sure. toss in the disclaimer that uh, schedules are always subject to change? And, uh, At any time. The way it works. <laughs> yeah, suck it up. So uh, do we want to go into the one thing or the other thing next? Well, other the other thing, because I really don't like other things. I, I and I vote for the other thing as opposed to the one thing. So it's up I to you. I have no Maggie. idea what we're talking about, but I hope the quiz comes up soon. It's nice. Maggie, it's Maggie, it's up to you. Vote. I one just did. Thing thing. No, you got to vote for either the one thing or the other thing. Well, whichever one I said is the one that's the correct one. Oh, you just said the one. He voted for the one. So that's Bob voted for the one. That's what we're doing. The one today in Gun Channel's history. Can anyone guess what today is in Gun Channel's history? There we go, man. What is today? What is today in Gun Channel history? Not Gun history. Uh, I only ever saw one guess. Someone said it was when Gun Channel started, but I don't think that's the correct answer. No, it's not. And I just ran a video of a panda freaking everybody out, and then smash it up the computer. Yeah. But they might not understand what that means. If they don't understand what that means. What do you mean the stickers aren't ready yet? Don't you know what today is? Uh, AC97 is closest. And he's on YouTube. What do you say? I gotta close out all this now. Anyway, and then so- Sean followed up. With uh, with the next closest over on YouTube, so it appears that the YouTube people are starting to get it. What today in Gun Channel's history is, they're getting closer. And that's probably why he's not here. They they at least know who it's about. Yep. How sad is that that they that the Gun Channel's guys can't guess it, and the YouTube people are. It shows how famous. The person might be. We're talking about. Hmm. Oh man, what? The... No, we won't. Anyway, it's Flippy's birthday. We're in the yeah, nothing creepy. It's just Flippy's birthday, and that's whoever linked that before. That's I think a perfect video for Flippy right there. Thanks for clearing that up before stuff got weird. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm trying to kill himself. So it's funny. It's Flippy Day. And that'll bring us to the next segment of the show. All right. So what are we at now? We're at the other, right? Yes. No, it's open. Chuck Norris, Lee Marvin. And that's a copyright strike. All right. So today, <laughs> the tactical quiz, and that is what we do on Wednesdays, where we have a, uh, it's a game, game show for guns. Really want to elaborate on this, so anybody that wants to can please contribute to our Patreon. I don't have the funds to start sending out the stuff that we want to start doing, but it's going to be significantly more shipping. So uh, hopefully people will uh, remember that and remember that none of us are getting paid to be here for an hour plus every day during the week, and uh, uh, there are going to be some shipping costs. So um, today we're going to do an un- uh, a, a new tactical quiz, one we haven't done before, an unprecedented tactical quiz. Never been done before? I will bring this over to here, and it'll be audio, I guess, and in nature. So you can play along if you're listening on a podcast, but you won't be able to win because you're not listening live. We encourage people to listen live. We are every single weekday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific. Uh, so if you can, uh, I don't know, quit your job or... I don't know, leave the kids Sometimes in. you can just get fired. Yeah, leave your family or something. Well, just leave the kids unattended at the pool or whatever. They can they can manage. There's the usually a lifeguard. Usually, a lot of times you can have one of them remote cameras or something. But anyway, then why uh, don't you have a nanny anyway? What's wrong with you? You should have a nanny. No, they should hire the nanny and send the money they were gonna spend on a nanny to us over on Patreon so that we can take this game 
this Wednesday gun or repeal child labor laws and put the kids to work and send all that extra money. There you or go. No matter Boom. yet, yeah. just Boom. sit them in front yeah. of the daily gun show, and that will keep the kids entertained. Oh, don't do that. Don't you remember how Bob started this whole show out today? Please do not put your children in front of the show if they are under the age of, like, 25. <laughs> Just say. Anyways, let's do the fun part. That everybody's waiting for all week. Let's just, let's just rewind this again. All right, so it's an audio tactical quiz today. I don't know how many should we do. Smeggy, how many of these should we do before we figure out who the winner is? Um, I don't know, like five or six or something. Making an odd number. An odd number? So yeah. five. So we're going to do five gun quotes, and it will say the quote, and then the first person to identify the person who's being quoted will win the heat or whatever, the round. And we'll do, it sounds like, five of those rounds. Everybody got got it? I I I do. Right. I'm not sure that I'm going to know the answers, but uh, I'll try. <laughs> well, that's why I'm going to do this, because I'm not screen sharing, right? Boom. As far so, as I can tell, you're not. Okay. okay. Everybody ready? 10-4. All right. So the first one is, <clears throat> you cannot save the planet. You may be able to save yourself and your family. You cannot save the planet. You may be able to save yourself and your family. And I'm hoping you guys are watching because I'm going over here to click on this. So I'm watching. Yep. So this watching. is when your Google Fu is going to come in to ha come in hand, everybody out there. Or your knowledge of Second Amendment quotes. Yeah. Uh, boom. Winner. Go. Angry American. And the winner is, or the answer is Clint Smith. Correct. The first answer is Clint Smith. And Angry American just beat out Sean Pottery. Like, Seconds. Hey, where you go, man? Uh, Clinton is incorrect. And the second one is. Sorry, it takes a while to click around. Next one is a free people ought not only to be armed, but disciplined. A free people ought. Not only to be armed, but disciplined. Almost sounds like a gun control quote. This guy's a classic gun controller. Uh oh, I said it's a guy. So now you know it's now you know which gender the person is. Was that Thomas Jefferson? What do you not read the inside? Or, oh no. We well, only just put it up, so Sean Pottery uh, is almost correct. <laughs> but I think that Arctic is more correct. What do you think? What do you want to do, G Webs, with that one? Oh, I can't see over there because... Well, Pottery says Washington, but Arctic literally said George Washington. Washington isn't an answer. Correct. So George Washington's an answer, though, right? Yes. So is that what we're giving it to, is George Washington? Yeah. So, right, Arctic. so then that is Arctic. Could be One Terrence second heat. Washington alone. It could be Terrence Jeff Washington or something. Hey, you, at least YouTube's trying to guess that one. Yeah, Paul Harvey is incorrect. Roosevelt's incorrect. Prepper Nurse is incorrect. George Jefferson is close. We already said what they was. So now they all know they're incorrect. Yeah, just let them know. All right, the next one. Uh, I have a very strict gun control policy. If there's a gun around, I want to be in control of it. I have a very strict gun control policy. If there's a gun around, I want to be in control of it. Everyone should know this one. Well, I was going to say, I think I know this one. Yeah, but until you type it in there, I'm not sure. Boom. Answer. I didn't even get a chance to start the ticker. Boom. So, I know who did that, Matt? Yeah. Matt, yeah. Clint Eastwood. So we got Matt. We got, oh, who did we get? Matt. We got Matt. Angry, we got Arctic, Arctic. And Matt. I got it. Right. Don't worry. Thank you. Don't worry, your little right. headsy. I got it. You All writing right. stuff down? Oh yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thank next you. One. Everybody ready for the next one? An armed society is a polite society. Uh, I believe Charlton Heston is incorrect. Tom Selleck is incorrect. I think those guys were guessing from the other one. 
No. Jeff Cooper? Not correct. An armed not society not. is a polite society. It's not as not. modern as Boom, you winner, Sean Pottery. Boom, he got it. Which is Robert Heinlein. Heinlein. Yep. yep. Starship Trooper, Stranger in a Strange Land. If you like reading, then read him. It's good stuff. So, or Bingo. There it is. So, are we still got a couple more or one more? I think we got one, one, one more. more. We don't have to do five. We can do more if you guys want. I just, whatever. Um, how about this one? They can give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety. Oh, they that give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. They that can give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Uh, is Ben Franklin correct? Yeah, you're not going to let people answer? Just had to say it right away. <laughs> okay, so Angry has two then. All right, next we'll go to a fear of weapons is a sign of retarded sexual and emotional maturity. A sign of weapons is a sign of retarded sexual and emotional maturity. Yeah, I know that one. Because <laughs> people tell you that all the time. Studied it at school. Oh. Boom. Pottery. Fancy. Didn't have to look that one up. Pink. So what? Pottery's got two. Angry's got two. That, that's correct. And then uh, Matt and Arctic. All right. Well, so why don't we just make it a, a face off? Or should we do it like best out of 10 or something? There's definitely more quotes, of course. It's up to you guys. Well, why don't we then, if we already, how many guys do we got right now? Well, we could do a heat between those two that got two. Or we could do a couple more and see if anybody well, else gets an obvious or something. Well, I guess what I was getting at is you either take the two that won the most in the first heat and they go forward, or you take all of them that won in the first and they're the ones that continue on. Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm up for either way. You guys are doing all the work. I just have to read off quotes. Well, let's go with everybody that won. Okay, so everybody for that won for the second round. We'll do three of these, I guess, and then the winner there. Yeah, so this is for what? Pottery, Matt, Arctic, and Angry. Correct, Spaggy? One more, or are they going to be doing a few? Oh, you got to do a few, right? Okay. Yeah, so, we got to do three at least. Best okay. So the next one is for just the, that those people that won the first round, and the question or the quote is, "Oh, we already said that one." Um, but if someone has a gun and is trying to kill you, it would be reasonable to shoot back with your own gun. Yes, I know who that is too. But. If someone has a gun and is trying to kill you, it would be reasonable to shoot back with your own gun. Yep. A lot of people are going to think, well, Bob has said all of these. But actually, Bob is stealing these quotes from other people and saying that. <laughs> Jeff Cooper is incorrect, but Pottery is correct first. Yes, the Dalai Lama said that in a Seattle Times interview back in the 90s, I believe. Maybe early 2000s. Right, the so Dalai Lama himself. Ngunguna, Ngunguna. The next one again is for just those people that have won the first heat or the first round. And this quote is, the right to defend one's home and one's person when attacked has been guaranteed through the ages by common law. Quoted again, the right to defend one's home and one's person when attacked has been guaranteed through the ages by common law. I don't know this one off the top of my head. Nice. Pottery. Starting to pull up. Pottery starting to pull ahead. I mean, or do we not accept MLK? I'm sorry. I would. Might have been 
Malignican, then that would have been way off. Really? I don't know, man. I mean, that's the, that's, that's a known, accepted social. It's, it's cheating by abbreviation. It's cheating by abbreviation. But if you're willing to accept it, we all know what MLK means. Martin Luther King. So you tell me. You're the final judge, dude. I don't care. Well, now that's not an answer. Then yes, that's fine. It was okay. Thank you. Thank you, that, Sean. Is there one yes. more, or are we done? Is it no well, possible? I mean, I mean technically. No one can beat one, he two. wins. So that's why I do five. Do two more then? Uh, you got to do three more. All right. So the next one is that rifle on the wall of the laborer's cottage or working class flat is the symbol of democracy. It is our job to see that it stays there. Again, that rifle on the wall of the laborer's cottage or the working class flat is the symbol of democracy. It is yeah. our job to see that it stays there. Is that the John Brown Gun Club? Because the you know, workers and Labor Party and all that. Oh, boom, Pawnery. And that, I think, is three out of five. Because Pawnery was the only one. Well, he wasn't the only one. I take that back. He yes, was right behind him, but he, he took a second to add a comma. Oh. Or, yeah. well, comma George. So it. It would well, appear that you've crippled yourself by doing it that way. You should have just done that it. The pawnery is the, is the one. Now, Mr. Tony, you're asking what is YouTube lagging? Like, it's known fact that YouTube has been lagging for the past four years compared to gun channels. Come on. Don't act like that's a surprise. You just usually got to be faster. So, is that it? There's no. Nobody else. I mean, technically, Pottery crushed it, and Angry was just seconds behind him. All right, well, seconds. throw a quick little comment. Yeah, I can do it. Uh, about the, the the connectivity issues, I want to say that everything in Tennessee seems to run a little slower, and that's I'm, not necessarily a bad thing. I don't know if that's a slam or not, but um, it could be. I'm just doing an on-the-spot report. Uh, well, no, Mr. Arson Tony, but you do have to remind us. I appreciate that, but I'm pretty sure you could always go to gun channels. But, hey, you know, just a thought. Nice. And even Angry said it's a one. That's, that's excellent. So, technically... Pawnery is the tactical quiz winner of the week, right? Yes. So here's what we're doing for the tactical quiz winner. So head over to the tactical quiz and pick a pet. Oh, shit. That, I got to update the picture. So go over to the tactical pop quiz page, grab a patch. But then what we're going to do is uh, keep track of the winners of the tactical quiz. And uh, I just haven't had time to put it together, but we'll be doing something uh, for the tactical quiz here. And all the winners will be uh, included. So it uh, behooves you to play on Wednesday. Hopefully it'll be uh, super fun going into the future here. I would just like to thank Sean Bain for his previous participation. Wow. Okay, then. Have a nice day. <laughs> so. Anyways, <laughs> Wednesdays are always fun. And I'm looking for a 22 caliber boar snake in my house somewhere. I guess uh, nice. there are some advantages to being on my cell phone. Oh, here it is. So what do we got left in the show, fellas? Uh, We're still doing a show, right? Got Bob's giant quote in there. Got oh. a movie. So, I don't know if this movie necessarily has anything to do with 308. So I don't know if there is a better 308 one, but um, we try to mention a gun-related movie every day. And Why don't we do Jaegers then instead? Okay. So we try to mention a gun-related movie every day, remind people a movie they haven't seen yet, or maybe with that movie, this particular movie, one that uh, you didn't watch when it came out because it was limited release, I think. And then uh, maybe when it was on uh, Amazon to pay, you didn't feel like paying for it. I think now, though, you can just watch it. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're right on that. So that's uh, what I saw. It was uh, daylight's in, right? 
Yeah, and I guess kids don't, little youngins would have just as much opportunity as the rest of us because it just came out like this year or last year. So yeah, it's, anyway, it's called Daylight 10. Jaeger was in it, and they do have that. Uh, the star of the movie is really that little SOCOM looking 308. So suppressed SOCOM, yes. And uh, he makes it work pretty good in the movie. I ain't going to lie. I mean, I know you probably like Sonny in there a little bit more, and Sonny's not necessarily utilizing the 308, but the hero or the main character of uh, the movie is definitely using the Springfield. Dun dun dun! Before they decided to attack uh, Illinois uh, gun rights, I definitely like the movie though. Um, you know, it, it it wasn't a hundred million dollar movie budget, right? But I think the money that they did spend on it was worth it. Um, it was one of the ones that I got to watch on Amazon. I paid for it or whatever, you know, for the, for the rental thing. And, uh, I thought it was very entertaining. I thought it was a decent movie. It had, uh, people that you will recognize like Lance Hendrickson and, and stuff like that. But it's got some, uh, other people in there that are legit, like real deal people like, you know, James. And I just mentioned Sonny. I'm not going to try and say his last name for fear of offending him. I have What's to say sense? I haven't seen the I haven't seen the movie, but it does look interesting. So I'll probably catch it eventually. I've never seen it either. Oh really? So yeah, it's uh it's a zombie movie or whatever, at least I've seen or whatever, something like that. And something uh, like that, yeah. I'm not really a big fan of those, but I watched it because Yeager was in it and it was pretty good. It was more of a... I guess, or a movie with guns, I guess, because they're just running all around having to defend Well, would you also say, though, because it had guys like Sonny and Jaeger and I think that other dude, that it was a little more uh, accurate was, portrayal of firearms usage, perhaps? It was just way cooler to watch. So it turned out to be more of just watching people run around and shoot a bunch of times, and uh, it wasn't that bad a plot, as I remember. At least, to, like say, not a big fan of zombie movies. It was still pretty good. Yes, and uh, Bob, did you get the chance to see it? No, I saw a preview of it, but I never did get to watch it. I uh, didn't didn't like Amazon, so. Okay. Now I understand it's out on YouTube or just on, the, you know, Netflix or something. So I will check it out. Excellent. And James being one of the positive members of the gun culture? Community. Or is it community? I don't remember what the statement was. I but anyway, I don't remember which one we're not allowed to say. Right. The good one. Um, <laughs> and then also Dano just taking a class at Tactical Response. And then also the hero uses the 308, and this is show number 308. So we kind of tied it all together for our audience and... Sometimes they just don't uh, always appreciate the hard work that we'll put in. But that's all right. We do it anyway. No, I mean, hours of planning. So what do we got for Gun Channels today? Let's see. It's Wednesday. So we got Matt coming up in a little while, I think, for his uh, Guns and Politics. We got We Like Shooting Later. Is anybody else doing a Wednesday chat these days? And I didn't have a chance to see if uh, Jimmy James was doing the chat earlier or not, early watch. Uh, there was a show earlier today, but I can't remember who was the um, host. I, I, think, I think Night Strike put one up. Nice. And then so tomorrow we'll hope that uh, Pondery puts up his good morning gun channels, which is great to have. And then... Uh, so that will be uh, gun channels today and in the morning. I do have a special report when it would be appropriate to fit one in. Um, you might need to speak into your mic just a little bit more, Dano, if yeah, possible. We can definitely hear all the restaurant noise, but not you. Sorry, Bob. Is, is this better? No. A little bit. Okay, this is me with my face right up against the, the 
phone. I can't get any. It's probably on the other side because it sounds like we hear like a bunch of forks and people murmuring. Uh, well, we can hold it for another day if, if, if it's, the quality's not there because I, I had a heck of a time just trying to get in. Try flipping your phone around because seriously, we can hear the other, the rest of the room very clearly. All right, this is the other side. Does this make a difference? No, I guess not. Am I crazy or can we hear the rest of the restaurant like really clearly? I can hear everything else, yeah. Yeah, just talk right. really loud, dude. No one will so, think so we're crazy. <laughs> I do it all the time. I did in the so airport the other day. The same. So it's the same backside? It is. Whoa. That's all right. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll just try to make it short. Is uh, Before I left Camden this morning, uh, I stopped in the SOE. And I just so happened to uh, have one of my uh, SOE belts with me. And it's about two inches too short. So I stopped in to see if they could possibly uh, make an alteration and send it to me You know, when, whenever they eventually got to it. And uh, I just happened to mention to, to the guy who I didn't know uh, that I just got back from a technical response class and was talking with um, James as well as uh, the instructor for the medical portion that was going on today that I did not attend, that they, that, that they had gotten some, some equipment modified. And so all of a sudden, I got, a guy steps out of, out of like nowhere and he says, what do you got? And I said, oh, I got this belt. And he says, well, let me take a look at it. And in the meanwhile, the other guy starts showing me around at different belts and all the different equipment. And uh, 10 minutes later, the guy comes back and says, here you go. And, and uh, I got a brand new belt. And uh, I mean, on the spot. Uh, so I was really kind of blown away with, 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 with the service and uh, the friendliness of John Willis. Um, and it was, it, was a, it was a wonderful experience. It was certainly a surprise. It's not what I expected at all. And you know, if you do happen to be, to be down in the Camden area, I would certainly suggest uh, uh, don't, be, don't don't let you know internet rumors and things dissuade you from stopping on by and stopping in and and, and, and being uh, you know checking out what they have um, and um, be, you know, don't be put off by rumors because uh, he, he's a very nice guy. At least that was certainly my impression, and my experience as well. So, SOE Special Operations Equipment get the two thumbs up from Dano. That's Excellent. Where are you at, Dano? I'm in Paris, Tennessee this evening, which is not very far. Nice. So that's my special report on SOE and Camden. Also stopped by Tactical Response this morning just to pick up a couple of t-shirts and stuff like that. And they were doing the medical portion of the class as well as James was in there. I'm not sure if he was instructing, doing some one-on-one -on -one instruction with, um, uh, not bodybuilding, but you know, um, health, uh, working out, being becoming stronger, that sort of thing. So, I mean, they got stuff going on you know, pretty much all the time, whether it's individual instruction or whether it's groups, as well as they also have a service. And I, don't, I, I was not aware that there's a that regardless of what you come down there for, uh, they have a uh, option where for $50, I think they call it a uh, workout tune-up or something like that, uh, where um, uh, an exercise professional will come and uh, you go through what you generally do when you work out, and they will help you fine-tune the workout you do to get improved and better results. So that, and, and, that, and that you can do that literally on the spot, like ordering a pizza sort of thing. Um, you just need to do it when you get there so that they know, okay, oh, you're leaving in two days so that they can then go ahead and, and reserve that time for you. But that's part of the, I forget the exact phrase, but, um, you know, live, fight hard, live strong sort of a thing. Philosophy. So, it was a great time. And I do have to say, uh, my earlier comment is Tennessee does have a bit of a slower pace. And it's something that, you know, coming from a small town but up north, that I actually enjoy. And everyone is so unbelievably courteous and polite. Kind of amazing. That's a nice thing to experience when you're not used to it, isn't it? Yes. It's, it's, it's kind of mind-blowing. 
I mean, to get to the restaurant I'm at, I'm at now, or I was at the local tourist attraction, there were some people well, watching their kids play, and I just, you know, here's some, some dude on his own that just walks right up to him and uh, introduced myself, told him I was from out of town, and told him that I was just looking for a place that they might suggest for just local Americana kind of food, and, 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 and they had no problems, Philip, all small, all very helpful, um, very, very pleasant, willing to, to, to spend time, and I find that, you know, at least in my limited experience, to be universally true, whether it's people just out in the parks or whether it's, you know, the, the guy on the other side of the gas pump from you, it just seems to be a, 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 a very friendly area. Come down and check it out, Tennessee, it's not what you think. Man. Cool. Like so Tennessee That's sounds fun. Yep. And if you're into boating or or that or anything, you know, outdoors on the water, fresh water versus the salt water, this is definitely a place to be with Kentucky Lake and the Tennessee River. I mean, there's just uh, uh I mean it it literally goes, you know, from the Ohio River all the way down into um the border between Alabama and Mississippi. I forget how far down along it goes, but it transverses multiple states. I'm sure there's some spillways or dams or whatever that you would have to portage around if you wanted to do the entire thing. But if you're into boating or, or kayaking or jet skiing or just water sports in general, I would think you know it'd be an outstanding place to come. And I'm going to stop talking, otherwise I'm just going to keep rambling. Uh, well, it looks like we're going to start talking about uh, patch panel stories. Is yep. that what it is? Anybody see, you see anybody suggest a patch yet? Uh, news media and 1889. Who said, well, which one was first, I guess? Uh, news media. And uh, where'd that come from? Gun channels. YouTube, YouTube, we got Tennessee is number one, and then comments that are somewhat off topic of what we're talking about. So here's a new thing: Snap Arctic can go over to the uh, Daily Pop Quiz that same page, scroll down, and claim that one. So we'll send you one. So uh, news media, I guess. What he just uh, won by participating in the topic? Really? How much winning is get getting paid? Wow! Excellent job, Arctic. Payoff, totally rigged. So uh, I don't know if he's talking about this news media one at the top here or if he's talking about where it comes from, the press pass. So basically we're going to send him this one and that one because why not? So basically the this is just the piece off the side of this one. You can see that this was just a patch that got screwed up probably. So we just cut the piece off that was still good and turned it into a little piece of a patch. And uh, this one, though, is our design. Came up with this one because we wanted to have something at a uh, shot because there was a couple of people walking around lording it over us that they got real media credentials for like going into war zones and stuff and wearing press passes and I wanted to be like them but I didn't have the money to buy one and um, well you can't really buy them right I don't know where to buy them at. so uh, anyway we made this one up and it basically says internet press on it so it kind of looks like a press pass and then I put a camera on it for like the uh, video or I guess a video camera for video a regular camera for like the whole idea of still images. So you got your YouTube and you got your Instagram and then a microphone for the podcasting, which we're all doing here. And that's pretty much the stuff that I do. So uh, I included those. And then it says news media, uh, but I'll have to grab the thing from the store. Actually, I probably should send you to the store where you can buy one if you want. Um, we took the S in media, or excuse me, the S in news and uh, stretched it out. So it actually says new media. And where do I have those? Okay, I'm under here. So uh, if we look at one there, you can see that that S has a little darker line through it. So although it says news media, it actually says new media. I thought that was clever. And we they come along with stick, uh, sticker um, and the patch. And uh, right now we don't have them in PVC, but we've been thinking about doing them in PVC. So i uh, be curious to find out if people think they'd be worth uh, you know, doing, the, doing the run. So uh, yeah, let us know in the... Or you know, fill out the daily pop quiz thing there, um, and we'll uh, send you one. I guess uh, these were probably our maybe our even like one of our third or fourth patches that we made. They were still when we were still figuring out 
the ropes, and uh, they're kind of neat. I like I like them. We've only done Very one, cool. so there's less than a hundred of them out there. And then once we got the sewing machine, started running off a couple of our own. So I don't think I have any on the patch panel there, but um, I I redid the design for our machine so that I could sew them because I don't have money to order another batch of them. They're not that popular or anything. So uh, it also let me make them subdued. So I did some with like the instead of being red there, it's red lame, made them green, and some of them are in blue. So uh, we do have a couple of color options, I think, over on in the, in the, on the store uh, here. So there's the, uh, they pop up here. There's the subdued, and then the blue, and then the dark background one. All very nice. For when you go into war zones. Yeah, I, I like the blue. That's, that's yep. my favorite. Yeah, that's better than red. But right, the so red also implies the on button sometimes, yes? Yeah, probably should put like maybe a little red accent somewhere in it. Anyway, that's a thing that we try to do once a week because we talk about the patch panel to where we send the winners of the tactical quiz and the pop quizzes. And uh, like I say, some of these designs are from us, like the one we just talked about. Some of them are uh, our designs that we have made elsewhere, like the you know some of them of this exact design. And then some of them are uh, from other places. And we've got some coming. Well, we got a lot coming, but we have some already come in uh, from people that have been attending some of the big shows and whatnot. So uh, the, stay tuned for the patch panel. It'll look a little bit different. There's already a couple missing from this. Bob came through and stole a bunch. And then, uh, like I say, we've got a bunch coming in the mail. So the patch panel will keep changing all the time. And uh, hopefully it's a way that we can say thanks to the people on the gun channel side. And then occasionally somebody from YouTube sneaks in and steals one of them. But uh, it's the way that we say thanks. And then occasionally, even less than that, if you're on the YouTube side and feeling sad, think about the people on iTunes who are listening to this days from now. They uh, never win. Yeah, they're just always sad. They have like one of those little clouds over them and it's raining all the time because they can only hear about all the fabulous prizes other people are winning. They don't even get to look at this screen. Right, they just got to hear the description. And yeah. to be honest, you know, you, you can't actually win if you don't participate. So just saying. That's an interesting question someone's asking on the YouTube side is uh, where's the F the media patch where you use the little icons of like the Facebook and YouTube kind of thing. That's F U media, right? Yeah. Oh, well, you're right. It is. But I just was reading what he wrote. Um, and uh, I don't know. Maybe you only made a couple of them or something. So they're not on the patch panel. Oh, so I'm getting I don't sell those. So we just... Uh... Uh, offer those every once in a while, it's like to our friends, or as uh, when somebody uh, makes a twenty-five dollar or more purchase, they get a free patch. Sometimes we'll throw them in as the free patch, but we don't sell them. Should do some sort of fake news one. That's a good idea. Yeah, you never know what's going to be on a wave when it's still popular. And if you ever do want to see the uh, most recent uh, patch panel picture, you can go right on over to dailygunshow.com. Yep, it's always there. All right, I guess with that, we're about done with uh, episode 308. Just like the, uh, the caliber, it ran pretty good for a while, but then gravity overtook it, and it just fell off at the end. <laughs> Still shoots what? flatter than the 30 odd 6 right? Still think it was a great show. Exactly. So that'll take us to Bob and his huge ass quote that he stuck in the spreadsheet and threw us all off for the whole show. Oh, wine, wine, wine. I like to do this though. We got uh, episode uh, 309 coming up tomorrow. And that means we'll be talking about gun stuff the 4357 SIG slash 9 millimeter conversions. Uh, then we'll be talking about. Uh, training ideas on how to be uh, ideas on how to always be aware of your surroundings. So that's interesting. Uh, then we'll uh, talk about the events that are coming up. So we encourage people to head over to gun channels and use the calendar to post any events that you might be attending, events that you might be involved with, or you just want to help promote. It really does help them out. It gives us something to talk about on Thursdays. So uh, it's one way to interact with the show. So we encourage you to do that. Um, also, we'll be doing Gun Channel Storytime, 
been very Thanos centric the last couple of weeks. This week it's apparently. So uh, apparently, we're talking about that tomorrow, and all the other fun stuff we do every single day. So I guess with that, we will see us tomorrow at seven p.m. Eastern. Okay, I guess to uh, end this, uh, we'll do our quote of the day. Uh, it's by Theodore Roosevelt. Before that, though, I just want to remind everybody, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, let's get more people watching and joining the Data Gun Show. Um, but yeah, and if you want to have a better chance to compete in the uh, incredible prize giveaways we have pretty much every day, um, I think it's Join the gun on that point, we'll just uh, end it with a quote, like I say, by Theodore Roosevelt, great president of a great country. Every immigrant who comes here should be required within five years to learn English or leave the country. And, uh, yeah, that shouldn't be that hard. So let's uh, keep that in mind when we're voting and all kinds of stuff like that. Let's let those immigrants who can speak perfect English. Maybe give them a bonus if they come here and they can just... Never mind. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. We'll see you all tomorrow. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching. Gun Websites, not...